Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Patricia Elliott. We'll be discussing her fantastic book, Seven Attributes for Success, Inner Success and Happiness, available for purchase through Amazon, barnesandnoble.com. But if you guys want to get everything that Patricia has to offer, do yourself a favor and head directly to her personal site, mindcircles.co.uk. There, not only will you find more information on Patricia herself, You'll find more information on this book, Seven Attributes for Success, but you'll also find four other titles that Patricia has written. And guys, listen, I'm going to try my best to save time to go into some of those other books towards the end of the interview, but you know what you have to do. Whether we get to it today or we don't, do yourself a favor and head directly on over to mindcircles.co.uk. You surely will not be disappointed. And I will say, Patricia was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by some of the best movers in the business. Book Trail Agency Publishing. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, well, do yourself a favor and contact Book Trail. You can find out more information on them at booktrail-agency.com. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Patricia, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction, and thank you so much for being a guest. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much uh, for the fabulous introduction and my books. Um, it's lovely to be on the radio and just spreading the message that people, everyone from all walks of life, can change their life for the better with some super simple tips. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, Patricia, we are very much looking forward to this, and I, and I think it goes without saying, but I'm going to put it out there anyway. This book is something that needs to be on everybody's shelves, regardless of the time, right? I mean, it's something that it's just a gift that keeps on giving. So you can always utilize a book of this magnitude, but especially after the year that we've all just had. And this pandemic has been basically wreaked havoc across the board. Now, the severity of that, of course, is as unique as the individual it affects. But we know that a book of this magnitude and really focusing on happiness and well-being is something that is greatly appreciated during this time. Patricia, yes. before we go into the book, let's hold off slightly. Start by telling our listening audience a little bit more about yourself, please. Well, I, I do have degrees from universities. I, I did law and then psychology and education. But the degree I value most is probably from the University of Life. Um, I faced many challenges. And I think what started me on the road, I would say probably to kind of creativity was I never felt I belonged. And then I learned, mm. you know, even from a very young age, then I learned that I'd actually been adopted. So it was no surprise that I kind of had these feelings of not being belonging. But I, one of the, I think my adoptive father would say, I don't know, I don't want to swear on, on the radio, but a stubborn streak, he called it my bloody minded gene. And <laughs> I think that, that stood me in good stead because if somebody said I couldn't do something, wow, I would set out to prove them wrong. And, uh, you know, throughout, I think one of the things I learned dealing with or having colleagues who were academic and highly intelligent, I still think there are a lot of people who have intellect, you know, they've got this common sense. So it's the university of life, I think, makes people um, just rise above even the degrees and things they have. Um, so I learned that I was always creative. I've always... Um, written. I've always had wee notes and diaries, just something that I automatically did. And uh, journaling, as we know from psychology, I suppose, is something that really helps people. But lots of people think, oh, you know, I, I can't write. We're not asking them to write a huge novel, just little notes. It could be, I have a bad day, or I've had a good day, maybe jot down why. So, um, 
be, because if you're creative, we need resilience and we need courage. Um, and that can change your life. And lots of people think, oh, I can't do this. I can't. I think it was Ed, Edward de Bono. He said, don't have a yes or no answer. Go beyond that and have crazy random ideas put together. And that's your kind of creative spirit coming out. And we found that during the pandemic. We saw lots of people who had started doing creative things they would never think of doing. Um, you know, I did daily videos, um, which are all on my YouTube channel, every day just to keep people motivated because I think we needed that. And, you know, it was just really wonderful to see people almost coming out of their shell thinking, oh, I can't do that. And suddenly there were artists, there were poets, there were musicians. And it was wonderful. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's just a wee bit about me. But, you know, the academic side, I, I, in fact, I think piano was my, my dream. I wanted to be a classical pianist and uh, that wasn't to be. So I kind of turned my thing to writing and uh, but I was always told, get a real job. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, I think if you're an artist and others, often parents will go, no, no, you need another, you need a real job. But <laughs> I think doing what you love is absolutely fabulous. <laughs> absolutely. Well, listen, Patricia, I can, I can absolutely relate in terms of being an artist. Those words are something that you always hear, right? Get a real job. And <laughs> thankfully, uh, the family that I come from, I mean, there's so many artists uh, within the family. So I never receive those words from family members, <laughs> but definitely from people in the real world. Absolutely. Yeah. Constantly going through. It's like, yeah, well, that's fun as a hobby. But what are you going to do yeah. to make money? Um, you know, because that's what artists always get um, yeah. dealt with, and right? I think, I think, yeah, I think that's the focus. Lots of people focus on money, and that's why I kind of wrote the book. It's inner success and happiness. You know, yes, we need money to live. Of course we do. We don't want people to be living in poverty. But it's just so much more. If you love what you do, you want to get up in the morning. Absolutely. You know, Patricia, this is fantastic, and... I want to go into the concept of inspiration. Now, yeah. first and foremost, given your psychology background, what were you seeing that, or maybe it doesn't have anything to do with your psychology background, and as you stated, because you've always felt that you were a creative person, this was something you just wanted to put out anyway, but were there any correlation to what you were seeing, given your psychology experience and background, that made you feel compelled to comprise this book and put it out for the public? Well, part of it is, I think, really is the university of life. I mean, again, I suppose what I hear from um, parents, adoptive or other people in my life are saying sort of get a real job. So the idea was, if you've got a brain, study towards it. I, I really had always had an interest in people. So I thought the next route to go was to have a psychology degree. But it's interesting that meeting some academics in the world, lots of them probably far have written far more academic articles than me, but a lots of them didn't seem to uh, want to see where that could be applied. Whatever I do, I've always wanted to apply what I learn. And I thought the only way of applying things is maybe to write in simple terms. I don't like jargon. I don't like confusing people with jargon. Um, so... And, and it isn't patronising people. I thought we we needed something that was fairly simple, you know, and uh, out of, uh, I suppose, I, I'd always, I'm a people observer. You know, I love watching people and listening. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think it, <laughs> we have chatting away just now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I do like listening and watching. And so many people um, are, we've got past conditioning. People are told, oh, you can't do that. You know, your your brothers and sisters, we've never been to university. We've never done this. And there's always kind of negative labels. Absolutely. And we think we can't do it. We need to ditch these negative labels. Of course, there's positive labels. If you're compared to your clever sister or something, that can have an impact on that person as well, mm -hmm. because they then maybe feel they've got to exceed their expectations. So just labels and everything. Try and see, start from the premise, I am me. You know, I am a person of distinction. You know, try and think of yourself as that. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I think that's, I just saw people, the people who face and manage and overcome challenges are those who 
um, don't see them as challenges. They see them as opportunities. And people can do that. Uh, I mean, I, I know you've met them as well. That I meet negative people and I keep thinking, right, I've got to just keep surrounding myself with positive people, try and ditch the negatives. Mm-hmm. Here on the line with Patricia Elliott, we're discussing her fantastic book, Seven Attributes for Success, available for purchase through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or directly through her personal site, mindcircles.co.uk. You know, Patricia... Next question that I'd love to go into, I'd love to, so we're, we're, we've been talking about certain perceptions that one should take to really help increase that inner peace that we're talking about, that inner happiness to give our listening audience a little bit more of a teaser. Now guys, you know, there's seven attributes. It's listed right there in the title and there's no way to get around it. If you want to grab there, all of the information, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, mindcircles.co.uk are the places you have to go. But since we have you here on the line, Patricia, talk to our listening audience. What are maybe one or two attributes that you discuss in the book that can help anyone going through some tough moments? Well, I think um, the first one is, I think, awareness, self-awareness. I think we all think we're self-aware, but actually we're not. Um, we have to know ourselves, and that is ditching these labels, the past conditioning. We've all had it. We've all been told, whether it's by um, parents, teachers, you know, whatever. And we have to try and go from the premise, right, I need to be me. And be self-aware of what I'm doing around me. And that's um, also creating habits, good habits. We're very good at picking up bad habits. <laughs> um, and I try and turn that around. And I thought, well, what could I give people that would be simple to use? Now, that in itself was something that uh, I found people, people would look at something simple and think it's too simple to be effective. And that's a pity because my tips are ABC. They are based on positive psychology, neuro linguistic programming, CBT, person centered. It's affirmations, breathing and creative visualization, the ABC. And you're using your imagination. And I think that um, what is hard about it is to make these your good habit. And what I learned was, and I think everybody, most of us are the same. We want a quick fix. We want, if, if I could give people a pill and go, here's your ABC, you know, in fact, an old friend said to me, if you could design a tube of Smarties and give somebody a pink one on a Monday and a blue one on a Tuesday, <laughs> you know, and you just can't do that. But people do. I mean, I don't know about you. Sometimes if you do have a headache, you want a quick fix. But actually, there are breathing techniques can, that can reduce the headache. So mm-hmm. the ABC are simple. But what's hard is to make them your habit. And of course, that means doing them regularly for 28 days. There's various psychology on the change of days, but I say 28 days. The problem is if you start on Monday, but forget on Tuesday, you have to start your 28 days again. So it's a bit like your uh, your New Year's resolutions. I'm going to start that on Monday. And you maybe go for it for a week and then you think, oh, well, I can't do this next Monday. That's where you start you're not creating that habit. Mm -hmm. So the self-awareness is key. And then you've got to have audacity, I call it. But that's courage. And then resilience. And resilience is just bounce back again. See the challenges as opportunities. But the most difficult one to understand, and I call it de-attachment in my seven attributes. I kind of changed the wording slightly in my later updated book to call it interdependence. Um, When I hear people say, I don't know what I'd do if my partner left me, or I don't know what I'd do if I lost my job. Now, the people that cope, actually, are ones that see that as a new opportunity. You know, so they've got, you've got to become so possessive of something that you can, you know, just love yourself. You know, if you love yourself, then, you know, good things tend to happen. And I know that because I lost my son to suicide. And I'd, I want him back, but I can't have him back. So it's a, I, I go on the premise, he's out of pain, and I know that he's in my heart and soul forever. You know, 
Patricia, so <laughs> many wonderful gems that you just laid out for us. You know, and some of the big things that, that really stick out for me is, A, as you said, shifting your perception. Guys, that doesn't mean you neglect what is actually happening. That just means you still take in all of the evidence, but you choose to view it from a different yes. from yes. a different place. Yes. Right? Now the example. I, I, no, I think we forget the power of the mind. Absolutely. You know, just even to say, I f if something bad's kind of happening or you've got negative people, I just say to myself, I feel good. You're in my head. I'm not saying it out loud, you know, but you bring that positive energy to yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and this is something that I, I've always been a very spiritual person. And as yeah. I've gotten older, my spirituality has deepened and really become more enriched because I, I, I have dedicated more and more of my life to, again, those positive reinforcements, change, shifting my perception to, you know, it was one of the oldest adages in the book, right? It's an old cliche, but I, I choose to see the cup half full rather than half empty. Yes. Yes. And again, that doesn't mean that you neglect what is actually there. So similar to the example that you had given, Patricia, and once again, I know I mentioned this before in the pre-screening call, but I'm very sorry to hear and my condolences for the passing of your son. Now, I too have lost very close family members. And it is a very tough situation to go through. And by no means will any certain message you say completely eliminate the void that has been left or the grief that you feel from the loss of a loved one. That is yeah. natural. You, you go through that and you feel those emotions. But you can choose to see rather than only seeing the fact that they are no longer with you. There are silver linings. There are ways that you can shift your perception to see their passing. Again, I'm oversimplifying, of course, for the sake of this interview, but there are ways to view that in a different light where it's not as daunting anymore. And yes. by doing that, you actually allow yourself, I think, to process in a much, a much better way, right? A much more stable way to go about it. And I, I love the fact that you went there and you took it there. You know, Patricia, I wanted to go into some of your other books, but the messages <laughs> within this book are so important that I think it would be best if we stick, if we stuck here and really flesh this out a little bit more. You know, I, you mentioned a couple of times that a, a lot of this, a lot of the information from this book really started and was birthed from the school of life, right? Just experiences mm -hmm. that you had gone through. In addition to that, what type of research have you done to really prepare uh, and developed and culminated into this book? My research was very much based on speaking to oh, over the years. I mean, uh, as I say, I've always written. So if I was writing something, I'd research it. Um, well, there wasn't Google around. I'm showing my age now, but there was. We didn't particularly <laughs> have Google at the time. Um, but I'd be looking at uh, academic articles and then trying to see um, if apply them to talking to people. So I talked to hundreds of people, maybe thousands over the years. And my some of the stories are shared in my book. You know, some of the examples I give are from real people. You know, how the coped um, and maybe how they didn't cope and then they used my tips. So my research has very much been, I suppose, really non-academic. You know, I've used my academic knowledge that I've gained over the years, but then taken it to a, a kind of light, live level, you know, and speaking to people, how would they feel? How did they feel? And uh, that, I think that kind of makes it alive. And I, I, I don't want to see that just because I've faced challenges, because everybody has faced challenges. Absolutely. And sometimes people say, oh, I haven't faced anything like you have. But a challenge to someone it, that they see as a trauma is, is as much as a trauma to them as something bigger to someone else. Who are we to see, you know, that theirs is less? So I would make a note of it. And I did speaking. I, I mean, I lectured as well and I used to lecture. I remember having uh, returners to work. And the energy in the room at that time, they were all female in the class, but the energy was so low. And I just started in introducing myself and saying, if you give your name and what have you done? And most of them said, oh, I haven't really done much. 
And then I started kind of pulling out threads of, well, do they have family? And they started to realize that actually they may not have academic qualifications, but maybe their husband didn't give them much money. So they were money managers. They were time managers. They were nurses to their children if they fell. And suddenly the room was full of people going, oh, or, you know, it was just giving them that uh, confidence in themselves that, oh, we are more than I'm just a mother. I'm just this. They're not. Absolutely. Nobody is just that, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Patricia, this is this is amazing. Uh, what you're saying is resounding because it's true. Again, guys, shifting that perception. I think so often we categorize ourselves and we put ourselves in these boxes because we're stacking ourselves up against other people. So, oh, I haven't accomplished as much as this person. Therefore, I haven't done anything. No, That's no, no. Right. Your accomplishments are your own. And you have accomplished a great deal. No one's talking about that other person. We're talking about you, right? And when That's you start right. to separate, and again, what you're talking about when it came to, you know, your significant other and how you were saying people were like, Listen, I don't know what I would do without this person if they're not in my life. Yes. Or I don't know what I would do without this job. You're pigeonholing yourself. You're you're putting yourself in a box and yes. with all of these constraints on it. Guys, that is not the way. Yeah. Right? And, I, and I think one of my attributes is um, don't wait for other people to encourage you or praise you. You know, praise yourself. Mm. You know, so many people say, oh, I was never told this. Well, don't wait on someone to say that. Just say, do you know what? I have achieved fantastic things, you know, Absolutely. whatever it is, baking a cake, it doesn't matter. You know, I think you have to start You just seeing yourself for what you are, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Listen, I, I, I love this. Guys, listen, I can sit here and I can talk to Patricia <laughs> for hours. Unfortunately, we're out of time. OK. Yep. And what's the what's so amazing about this is, guys, we've barely scratched the surface. There is yeah. so much more to be discovered. And that is now why the onus is on you. Amazon, barnesandnoble.com, mindcircles.co.uk are the places you have to go. Seven Attributes for Success is the title you have to pick up. And Patricia Elliott is the author you have to thank for bringing it to your table. Now, as thank I, you very much. Of course, absolutely. Now, as I mentioned before, guys, this is not the only book. Now, we don't have time to go into a description of any of them. But when you go to her personal site, mindcircles.co.uk, in addition to this book, Seven Attributes for Success, you're going to come across four other titles, one of which is called Resilience and Courage. Next, we have Changing Seasons of Life, followed by The Weight of Emptiness. And then there's even an academic book in there. For all my scholars out there, it's called Strategic <laughs> Ethical Leadership. Do yourself a favor, head on over there and make sure you're picking up copies of every single one of them. Let's grow, let's develop, let's educate ourselves. And it starts with this fantastic narrative. Patricia, this has truly been an honor. Thank you once again for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. Thank you very much. Can I leave just a strap line? My two words I say at the end of all my YouTube is my trademarks, smile and laugh. They cost you nothing. Nothing.